Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Browser Hacking. Uh, today, we're going to be working on JavaScript objects, and we're going to be expanding on the property store in our objects, because currently it's very, very immature. Uh, let's take a look at where it is right now. So currently, if we look in our JS object class, um, we have stored all of the own properties of the object in a hash map in each object, and then we have a uh, link to the prototype in a pointer. And this is pretty much the naive way that you would implement this, but um, today I'd like to start implementing um, object shapes. And object shapes are sort of a foundational technique used by all JavaScript engines where um, you sort of figure out the class or like uh, the hidden class of a uh, of an object, and then um, you're able to uh, figure out if you have many objects that happen to share the same set of properties, and if so, you can um, you can apply various optimizations with that information. So, a typical example would be, uh, let's see, if you have like a function foo that creates a new object, and um, you know we just set an object up like this then when you do um, a is a new foo and b is new foo, then um, these two currently will be two unique objects which will have uh, their own unique hash maps and prototype links. But you can plainly see here that these two objects are going to have the same uh, properties, they're going to have the same sort of um, structure layout. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a way to compute that structure layout so that we can share it between these two objects. And um, essentially the technique we're going to use for that is called um, shapes, or uh, JavaScript core calls them structures, and I think V8 calls them maps, but I like the name shapes. So um, shapes are, are used to uh, contain the property uh, mappings. So um, we'll basically, for this thing, we will figure out, in this, in this example here, we will figure out some new thing called like a shape for the for these guys, and they will have, a, both will have a pointer to the same shape. So uh, A shape is uh, S, B shape, S. And this will be our shape up here. So that shape is going to have a hash map containing, um, I guess, the name X and the name Y. And not only the names, but we're also going to put in some other metadata, like um, about the individual properties. So like, is it configurable? Is it, uh, was it enumerable? Uh, I think. I don't remember exactly what the different attributes are, but uh, basically more uh, metadata about the properties, not just a name, but a little bit more. And this tells us if you can uh, delete the property from the object, if you can um, enumerate it, if you can write to it or not. I, there might be some more um, attributes I'm forgetting about. But uh, basically, now that we do this, then we will be able to change the data storage of each object from being a hash map to being something a bit more packed. So we could have something like just a, um, like a vector of values, for example, storage. Um, and then uh, we can also put the prototype on the shape. So we'll put that here as well. Um, objects prototype. And the lay data layout of an object will instead be something like this. And then the shape, shape is going to be a garbage collected object. And this is sort of what we're going to go for. Um, now, the way that we figure out that both of these two objects here have the same shape is that we construct their shapes um, along a 
predictable path. So what we'll do is when you create a new object like this, or like this, I should say, then it starts out with uh, sort of the empty object shape. And then here you're adding a property to it. And what we do then is we do a transition to um, a new shape that is the old shape plus the property X. And then here we do a second transition to a new shape that has uh, the X property, but also has the Y property. And so um, we cache these transitions in, in like maps along the way. And this allows us to follow the same path when you run the same code again. So uh, the second time we do new foo, it will follow those cached transitions and end up at the same exact shape that we used for A. So that's, that's the basic idea of how you end up with the same shapes. And there are so many ways that you can take advantage of this once we have it. But today we're just gonna we're just gonna try to build it uh, so that we have shapes to begin with. And I'm a little bit um, unsure of how this is all gonna fit together because um, I have never built this before. But we will do our best. So we'll start by making a shape class and maybe adding it to the make file. That's a good start. Okay. And then I just wanted the copyright header from here, really. So let's see about our shape class. Um, this will be a final inheriting from cell, because we're going to make these guys garbage collected. Um, Oh, by the way, I should have added here um, that this hash map here, it doesn't necessarily have to be instantiated um, because if you follow the state transitions, um, maybe I should draw out the transitions or sketch them out here. So first you start with this uh, and then you have a transition where you, let's see how we can line this up add x, which is a transition to a property with x, I mean an object with x in it. Um, from there you transition again when you add y, and now you have a shape with x and y. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. So what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to each in each of these transitions uh, every object shape will point forward to any transitions that have been made from that shape and it will also be pointing backward to the, um, the shape where it, it transitioned from and so from any shape you'll be able to traverse backwards in the transition chain uh, to the root and reconstruct the uh, this hash map from doing that so this would be like previous, something like that. Previous and chain, right? And so this hash map here, you can throw it away and rebuild it. But um, once you sort of reach the final shape, then it probably makes sense to create this hash map and keep it around. Uh, and there are various different solutions we can do that. But, um, but really, this is all you need to reconstruct it. Uh, or, well, we should probably add a little bit more for that. So, like, we will need the um, transition name. That's like this name here. And the, I don't know, transition attributes. So these two things represent what we were adding on top of the previous shape in the transition chain. Okay. So it's good that we're doing this, actually, because it's forcing me to think everything out. So maybe we'll leave this on screen here. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. So let's see what we need to do. We're going to need um, the prototype. So we'll put that here. And we're definitely going to need 
um, class name override so that we can say that this guy is a chape. And we're going to need a visit children so we can inform the garbage collector um, what our object graph looks like. And then, let's see, so we'll put a virtual destructor here. And probably we don't need that. And, 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 and we are going to want a link to the previous shape. So here will be the um, transition name. Maybe it should be a fly string, actually, because it's. Um, yeah, we should use a fly string. The flyweight string class. Um, and also we should have the attributes. So. Mm, should we just call these property attributes? Previous. Yeah, I guess that's maybe okay. And for now, for simplicity, or actually, let's not do the hash map right now. We can leave that alone. Um, so what are we going to need here? We're going to need a way to construct one of these guys. So just shape, I guess. And we'll also need a way to uh, create a shape that's um, a new link in a transition chain. So that would be a shape and then like take a pointer to the previous shape. Um, and uh, here we'll also need the um, property name and the property attributes. Okay, so new shapes this, transition shapes this, okay. And then <clears throat> we need to be able to go from here to um, forward transitions. So we'll use a hash map for that. And um, a trick, the trick here is right that uh, this is a, you, it's okay to forget forward transitions uh, if you wanted to, it, it doesn't hurt you, it just hurts your performance because you're no longer going to realize that, hey, wait a minute, these guys have the same, these objects have the same shape. Um, if you lose your forward transition cache, then uh, you, you're unable to reconstruct the same shapes again. Um, so, I'm just thinking, this thing. Yeah, we don't have like weak pointers, weak GC pointers. So this is going to have to, this is going to be a little messy when it comes to uh, garbage collector semantics right now, but we'll just ignore that and push forward anyway. And we'll get back to that later on. So here, um, I guess the um, key for this map is just going to be the name. So transitions from here to arbitrary other shapes uh, transitions cached transitions or something like that so that yeah okay and then maybe this should be private then because then we can actually have something like transition create transition Name U8 attributes, let's say. Yeah, that sort of makes sense. And you can call this when you want to transition. So let's see how we would actually use this. What would be the unoptimized way to use this? So in object. Um, Wait a minute, why, why is this not even doing the thing? Oh, we need shape here. 
think we can just put that in the forwarding header for now. Okay, and then a lot of this code is going to be a bit different, but I think we can just put a lot of it out of line. So changing the prototype of an object now also uh, becomes a little bit more complicated, right? Because um, since the prototype is stored on the shape, then we need to actually create a new shape. So this, this, there will be a kind of transition where you change prototypes. Um, maybe we should come up with that right away. So it's a create transition. It's like a create put transition maybe, because when you're putting a new thing. And we can also have a create set create pro prototype transition. And the sky will just take the um, I guess the new prototype. Itchy nose again today. Oh, jeez. Why? Okay. Mm, that's pretty okay. Create prototype transition. Yeah. So let's put all of this stuff out of line and then we can go and uh, figure things out later. Uh, I don't know why my nose is itchy today. I haven't been outside or anything. Just been sitting indoors like a good boy. Um, okay, and then we are a bit red down here because own properties. Yeah, this is not going to work anymore. So we're going to have to rethink that whole thing. Um, and we'll get to that. Ah. Um, yeah. So that's good. Ah, sorry. Okay. So has prototype. I guess um, here we can just call this prototype. And how's that going to work? Object prototype. Essentially, we'll just ask the shape. And we'll say that every object has a shape. There's no such thing as a shapeless object. Um, so we'll say shape prototype. Yeah. And I think we will have a shape like this. to actually expose the prototype. That's fine. Okay, so... Here, let's see. So when we visit an object, then instead of now we can't visit like the, all the properties and the prototypes, so we instead we have to tell the garbage collector to visit our shape. And then shape will know how to do this stuff. So namespace AJS. Uh, voyage should pay visit children. <clears throat> Visitor, right? Mm, right. And 
what do we need to visit actually? So this is like what <clears throat> when the garbage collector visits the shape, what does the shape think that the garbage collector should spare, like protect from dying? <clears throat> Definitely the prototype. Uh, we should probably protect the previous. So if m previous um, visit or visit. And for simplicity, let's, for now, let's just visit all of the cached forward transitions, even though uh, they could be dead ends, right? Because imagine that you, you create a bunch of objects in some crazy way, um, and then that, that causes the instantiation of a whole bunch of forward transitions, and then you throw away that object, and now uh, all those forward transitions that know how to recreate a shape for that crazy object, they're no longer necessary, but we're still gonna hold on to them because we have no, we don't have a good mechanism right now to figure out that we could throw them away. So it's something that we'll have to get back to later. Um, but for now, we'll just iterate across the, um, the cached forward transitions. Maybe we should call them forward transitions actually. I keep calling it that. So it value um, is it tour? Is it mm, is not a function or function pointer? Wait, why not? What's the row? Oh, oh right. The parens. <laughs> okay. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, previous, maybe we should call that backward transition. I mean, the thing is that you don't actually transition backwards, I think. Um, technically you could, I suppose, but it, I don't think that's ever really useful. It's like if you add a property and then immediately remove that same property from the object, I'm not sure that's ever useful in practice, but I don't know. Anyways, this data this data member setup seems pretty okay. Let's just make sure we explicitly initialize primitives here. So that's cool. Maybe we can write out some of these functions. So shape, shape, what did we have? This is the... Um, transition shape constructor. So just to be clear, like every transition is just a, basically just a pointer to a new shape, right? It's from one shape to another. So when I say tr a transition, I really am just talking about like a pointer link between two shapes. Um, so here we know that the previous is the previous shape. Oh, and we should, this is a um, put transition, so the prototype transition will be a bit different. So this will be um, the new prototype, I guess. Mm. <clears throat> so this is like m property name, property name, property attributes. Maybe we should update the way that this thing here looks. Or, because with this shape, or these these are like the actual shape, including all of uh, the things that came before it. So maybe this is actually good. Um, but what each individual shape contains right now is like add x, add y. Uh, you could also have something like set prototype. Oh, and that would just go to uh, yet another kind where you have x, uh, y, and proto uh, is, oh, I don't know if that makes sense, if you understand what I mean, but these are the transitions from the original shape to the final shape.
project new prototype. Prototype is new prototype. So if, um, let's see, so if we're not doing a prototype transition, then the prototype of the new shape when constructing it should be the same as the old shape. It's only when we're doing a prototype change transition that we actually change the prototype member. Cool. Now let's add those little helpers. So create put transition and maybe we should have, I was thinking maybe we should have a helper create, just creates an empty one. Um, so we'll start with that one. So create Interpreter. Mm, well, that's kind of weird, actually. Maybe it's fine to, to be like this. Yeah, I think maybe that's fine. Um, so, property name. Okay, now we're going to need some includes here so we can access all of our things. Heap allocate, maybe we can get straight to the heap. Heap allocate shape property name property attributes and this. So this is when we add a new property, then we construct a, um, a new shape like this. So this object that we're transitioning from becomes the previous shape and then the property name and the property attributes are sort of what describe this transition and then when we create a property um, no not property prototype object new prototype new proto all right. Cool. And then I guess I was thinking like which for a hash map just to make this a little bit easier to implement as a first step, I think we'll just make a hash map. Um, and we can put it in an own putter so that it's only optionally reified. Um, so on putter hash map to or from what to what? I guess like um, from the name to the um, property property description. Property metadata, maybe. Property table, let's call it. Okay, and then here the property metadata is going to be the attributes. And an offset. So the offset, this is going to be the offset into the object's own internal storage. So let's see. Yes. So each, right. And this is the that like lazy on-demand thing I was talking about, that it would be OK if this data went away, because we can reconstruct it. I'm just going to add it now so that we, we have a way to do things the way that we have been doing. Otherwise, this is going to turn into a monster rewrite. So uh, we're going to add this as a sort of a stepping stone or a stopgap or whatever. So we can synthesize a property table. 
think that makes sense. So the way that you look up a property is going to be that you ask the shape for uh, we'll make an API for that. So property metadata, say optional property metadata, look up comments to play string. And yeah, and this will give you a property metadata or a uh, like an empty optional depending on if we know about this property or what. So this will look like this. Name, maybe even property name. Okay, so if, well, we need a property table. So uh, ensure property table. And then we'll need a function that materializes the property table if we don't have one already. So ensure property table. So let's see. Oh, I guess this, since this guy is const, then this guy kind of has to be const as well so that we can call it. But well, then we will make this guy mutable. Okay. And then um, return m property table. Property table. Get property name. Yes. So here, if we already have a property table, we can do nothing. Oh, I feel a sneeze coming on. <coughs> Ooh. Excuse me. Okay. So now we need to make a property table. So make a new hash map from fly string to property metadata. And then what we got to do next is we have to walk our um, shape transition chain from start to finish. So we, uh, we have to go backwards. So let's just write this out in the most in the easiest, most obvious way possible. And it's not going to be optimal, but We'll leave some money on the table for future optimization. So let's see, vector of shape. Um, sh shape chain, or we'll just call it chain, transition chain. Um, okay, and then we will walk backwards. So while, or no, for. Um, Shape is previous, or no, this um, shape and previous shape is shape and previous. Okay. And then transition chain append shape. So let's see, I immediate, there's immediately a very noticeable problem here that we are putting a um, garbage collected pointer in a vector, which is on the heap. So this is fix me. Um, we need to make sure the GC doesn't eat, doesn't um, collect. Um, the shapes transition chain as we're building it. Uh, maybe some kind of REI uh, defer GC until for a moment. Prevent GC for a moment helper thingy. Might be a useful thing to have. Because the, um, the garbage collector only 
um, conservative. We have it's a conservative GC, but it's conservative in that it only scans the stack. We don't scan the entire heap because it would get um, it's too much to scan. Um, so when something's on the heap, we have to explicitly protect it. So I guess one thing we could do is we could use handles, but I think I'm I'm just gonna leave this here so we can go and make an RAII thing for this instead a bit later. Anyway, um, why can't I do this? Because this is a const chape. Okay, that's fine. So now we have the transition chain. And now we want to actually populate this property table with everything that was in the transition chain. So we'll be going from like the back of the chain to the front. So we do backwards iteration, um, which means that we do transition chain size minus one. I is like that, minus minus I. And then property table set. Um, let's see, shape is transition chain I. So M property name and shape. Oh, we have to make a metadata. So what was in the metadata again? The offset and the attributes. Oh, right. The offset and the attributes. Hmm. So I guess the easiest thing with the offset is to just say, we'll just keep an incrementing counter here. Um, so next offset. Plus plus and the attributes they're gonna be the shape M property attributes. Okay. So I think this constructs the property table based on the shape transition chain. I feel like I got that right. Okay. So um let's see, what else were we thinking of doing? Uh, I guess we can go back to the object code and see if we can actually implement something here. So has own property. So what this has to do, instead of, now that we don't have a hash map of properties in the object class itself, um, what we have to do now is um, ask our shape. So return shape lookup um, property name has value. So that's pretty simple. And then uh, put, <clears throat> we have put and we have put on property. We have get on property. <clears throat> I guess we can do get on property first. So um, instead of going to our hash map, we'll just go to the, let's see. Metadata is shape lookup <coughs> property name. If metadata has no value, um, then what should we do? Oh, I guess we should just return uh, like that. And then then we know that we have the offset and we have the, um, wait, what was in this thing? This is our storage. So the offset is an offset into this vector right here. So um, the value here, as this guy calls it, is m storage at metadata uh, dot value offset, right. 
and this is not an optional anymore, so we can just do this. If it's an object and it's a native property, then we handle it like we always did. I think that's okay. And then we just have to care about put implementations. I think that's all that's left. So these are the tricky ones. And of course, setting the prototype, but we'll get to that. So put has to first do a metadata lookup. Shape lookup property name. Then if um, metadata has value, then the value is going to be, wait, am I, oh, I'm missing something here. I forgot to do object arrow. Did I forget that up here as well? No, I didn't. Okay, that's good. Put, put, put. I'm probably making some stupid mistake uh, right now, but we're just gonna keep keep pushing forward and see where we get. So storage at metadata um, value offset. Okay, and <clears throat> Put own property has to be fixed a little bit as well. Right, put own property. That's where the interesting thing will happen. Because this is if you're um, calling a setter in the, somewhere in the prototype chain. But if there's no setter in the prototype chain, then this is supposed to become an own property. So we get here. And I guess first thing we got to do is do a metadata lookup. So shape, lookup, uh, property name. If metadata has value, that means that we can just write to it in storage directly. Um, but if it doesn't have value, we have to put it in storage. We have to we have to make space for it. So this is if we don't find it in the shape, that's when we have to make a transition. So here we need to make a new transition, basically. So we go and uh, set set the shape of this object to uh, create put transition um, property name. So we're just going to use empty attributes for now because we don't have attributes yet. We'll be adding those, but right now zero is fine. So here we go. And metadata, this is suboptimal, but we'll do a second lookup after we add it. And we'll assert that metadata has value at this point. Yeah. And then value here is going to be m storage at metadata value offset. And then these guys change. Okay. Offset is value. Okay, well, I'm feeling very optimistic. I know that we forgot about a bunch of things, but let's see how far we can go with the build. I feel like um, set prototype is definitely missing. And a const version of this. Prototype. <clears throat> um, so here we'll just do M shape is M shape 
create prototype transition to new prototype. <coughs> hmm. Right, and we can't iterate the own properties like that. That's okay. Oh, and we need a shape when we boot up this object. So, M shape. So, one thing is that these guys need to start out with the same exact shape. So, we'll have the interpreter create the, like the ur shape, like the original empty shape. Um, <coughs> that shape, something like that. Um, shape, empty object shape. So we'll create that on startup here, like before everything else. Empty object shape is heap allocate a shape. No big deal, it's just an empty shape. Uh, runtime shape. Maybe it could even be called empty shape. Empty object shape is probably okay too. Okay, so we'll make that guy first and we should make sure we protect him from garbage collection actually. So we'll make sure that we add it as a root to the garbage collector. Empty object shape. So it never goes away. Okay. <clears throat> object constructor. So this guy here, get own property names. He wants to iterate the own properties, but this is going to be a little bit different now. So now we can just go directly to the shape. So go to the shape dot um, maybe property table something like that and um, we just need the names actually so we can have this guy hand us let's see we could actually just make a reference getter for this thing const reference getter uh, property table. Yeah, let's do that. That would be kind of simple. Uh, ensure property table. Return them property table. All right. forgot to... what's the problem? Um, oh, these guys need to be... wait... shape... line 8... heap allocate shape... oh, okay, so... Uh, I have to make these constructors public. <coughs> it's a little unfortunate. But it's okay. All right, so we built. I have a strong hunch that this is not going to work on the first attempt, but we'll give it a go. Um, create put transition. So we're definitely not um, s setting anything in the forward transition thingy. So we need to be doing that. <clears throat> um, so if there is already a put transition, we need to find that. Um, if m uh, forward transitions, let's see auto it. We can get maybe? Yeah, we can get it. Um, property name. 
So we'll get the forward transition. Um, and New shape value or null putter. So if we find a forward transition, we also need to verify that the forward transition actually goes somewhere that has a compatible set of attributes. Otherwise, um, if you have two objects uh, and they follow, they're following the same transition chain, so uh, they need to have compatible attributes. Because imagine that we were adding uh, one of these properties here as a writable property, and the other one is, is not writable. Uh, and then we repeat the same process, but we try to make both of them writable. Then those two um, should not share the same final shape, because in one case, the Y property is writable, and the other it's not writable. So we need to, um, <clears throat> we need to make sure that we validate the property attributes. I think maybe the, the right, the best thing to do would be to make the attributes part of the forward transition lookup, but I'm not sure. Maybe this is okay. We just need to, um, let's see if new shape and new shape um m property attributes is equal to property attributes so if they're compatible then we just return that new shape instead of creating one and likewise when we do the new prototype thingy how do we how do we find the new prototype thing i guess we could put some like sneaky value here like proto <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to solve this one right now in this very moment. Maybe we'll always do a new shape for prototype transitions because they're a bit more rare anyway. Um, we'll have to deal with them eventually, but maybe we don't have to deal with them right very now. So we're missing a destructor. Compiler is upset about that, so I'm sorry, compiler. Here we go. case we want the values. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm just going to take a... Um, wait, no, how do we do this? Hmm. We want... This gives us the names of each one. We're going to have to do a lookup here. Uh, I guess we can ask for the storage. Since we're iterating the property table, we know the offset of each one. So we'll have to ask for it, like, let's say, like, object get uh, direct object shape, or um, it value offset. Yeah, that'll work. Um, size, OK. Then we'll need some get direct thing that actually just does a quick lookup by offset. So we'll put that here, value get direct, index const, and Lord have mercy on you if you call it with an invalid index. And you're on your own. All right. All right. So, 
Well, let's try this out. What can go wrong? So we can just start the REPL and all already dead. <laughs> uh, I guess we never actually make space in the um, property storage. So we definitely need to uh, increase the size of this whenever we are adding a new property. Put own property. Hmm. And of course, we haven't taken anything about um, numeric index indexes, uh, numeric property indexes, or arrays or anything like that. We're just uh, glossing over that right now and focusing on named properties. Um, so here, when we create a put transition, then we need to grow the um, we need to grow our storage. We have grow uh, resize. And storage size plus one. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So whenever we're adding anything to the storage that wasn't there before, <clears throat> we're adding a new key to an object, then we have to add one to the size of the storage. That makes sense. All right, we're well, still dead. Put own property. So what are we trying to do here? We're an object prototype. Um, and let's see, so and let's just follow this code. Interpreter. So we're in the very first thingy here called object prototype. Uh, and we're in the constructor for object prototype, which means that we have been in the base class constructor object, which is where we set the shape. So we should have this shape right here. And then we should have made a transition from that shape to um, to a new shape that has the object prototype. I guess we could actually special case this scenario and um, make the empty object shape originally have the object prototype as its prototype. I think maybe that would be okay. Um, otherwise, otherwise the it won't, this whole thing is not going to work correctly right now because we don't do forward prototype transitions uh, caching. So I think maybe here we'll just say set prototype direct. Uh, I'll just set prototype actually. Um, oh, but this should be the object prototype. But we don't have it yet. It doesn't exist yet. Mm. Tricky. Okay, so never mind that for a moment. Set the prototype. Okay, okay, I know what we're doing. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna set prototype without transition. Right? So we'll do that. And what I guess what that would effectively do is just call set prototype. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll have something for that. Our sneaky secret interface. Set prototype without transition. New prototype. Okay, so that's a sneaky one, but you can do it. Oops, wait. here at the put native function. Oh, but the object prototype changes its prototype to null putter. Wait, let me just look in the VHL here. 
um, object. Let's make an object. Okay. Oh. O proto is object get prototype of O. So this is our object prototype in V8. And get prototype of the object prototype is null. Okay. That's fair. So this will be okay. That makes sense. So The object prototype should not have a prototype. Um, JS. Okay, so where are we? Object prototype put native function. I'm assuming that is this one. So this one calls JS object put, which calls put own property. I guess we end up um, down here, presumably. JS object, put on property. We do a lookup, which will fail. So we say, okay, well, we don't have a value for that lookup. So we'll create a put transition. Um, <clears throat> presumably, but let's see if this actually happens. So creating a put transition. Put transition new property name property name. Okay. Uh, the JS and make use land JS and sync and run. All right. Creating put transition for prototype and has own property. Wait. What are we constructing here? Object prototype. We're making this guy object prototype. Has own properties, the second thing. What is this thing? Create prototype transition. Oh, I guess it's the function constructor. So we're making a native function. And that works out. Fine. Okay, that seems okay. And then we have the problem after adding the has own property that. Wait, why is it trying to access this? Put own property. Put transition. Sizing storage from m storage dot size to well, it's a very advanced math there. Um, and then let's say offset is, and what is the metadata value offset? We'll find out when we run it. Resizing storage from zero to one offset is. Wait, why is the offset one? That is a bit suspicious. I guess, although we should probably resize some storage to whatever the shape says. So whenever we set 
set the shape of an object, we should resize the storage at that point. So we'll do something like this transition set shape new shape. We'll call it we'll call, not call it transition because it's confusing, but new shape. Um yes, I think that's okay. And then let's see object set shape. So we'll resize it to the um, shape max offset. We should call it size, maybe. New shape size. Or property count. Mm, property count is pretty good. So let's see. Size D, property count. And this actually necessitates um, materializing the property table, because otherwise we don't know how many properties we have. Or we can just traverse backwards through the chain, I suppose. Or we could store this on this guy if we wanted to. Right now, let's just be lazy. So we'll say size T, shape, property count, ensure property table, return. Um, we can even do it this way actually return property table dot size. Yeah. probably write all that code in that way. All right. So this guy will have set shape internally. And then we'll resize the storage to the new shape property count. Hmm. Okay, now we are failing. Metadata has value. Put native function. <laughs> and we are trying to create a put transition for new property name, prototype, resizing storage, that's all good. And we're in function function, so we're here. We're putting this prototype thingy, resizing storage from zero to one. So this presumably succeeds, set shape, and then we do a lookup of the property name and that doesn't work out. Why doesn't that work out? That's kind of strange. Oh, because set shape does not uh, assign the shape. Yeah, that was never gonna work. And look at us, we have a REPL. So we can see a whole bunch of transitions happening here. Uh, let's try to create an object. And we died. <laughs> but we were able to do something. O, so this is us adding O to the global object. And what are all these things? Oh, I guess it's just creating everything on startup. So yeah, this is transitioning the global object to a new shape that includes the O property. That's pretty cool. You might, we, we might want to make like the global object be exempt from transitioning and, and have like, um, it might be good to have the option of 
transitionless objects to to be able to tell certain objects that like don't even bother with the transition stuff um, because if you're adding a ton of things to an object then you're creating a lot of transitions right like all these um, transient shapes and they might never be useful so in case you know that then it would be good to have a way to inform the engine that like don't bother creating a transition chain anyways let's look at this failure so <clears throat> get own property is failing so we did like um, o dot something is something what was that an assignment expression um, I totally forgot what I was even typing maybe we can try this on Linux just once it's a bit funny a bit fun um, quite simple to build it on Linux. So let's try that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was just assigning to a new thing. Oh, what's wrong with you? Narrowing conversion. Well, aren't I silly? Um, next offset plus plus that's this guy right here all right well don't mind me if you're gonna be that way about it oh still narrowing oh what type is that then oh it's u8 that's why hmm or not u8 it's um u32 right or what did i say that was yeah u32 we can just use a size t um, okay, that was a fair point by the uh, compiler, so I'm not going to dispute that one. So O is new object, get O, does not work. Mm, let's get a valid grind up in here. Alright, so O is a new object, and O, and that doesn't work. We're aborting here in well we're doing a property lookup on the global object essentially interpreter 161 so we're here doing a global object get that makes sense because O is on the global object which means it will go into the global object get and we'll end up in get own property. Hmm. I wonder if we can see the, um, can we see the global object? We can't. Are we even asserting correctly, I wonder? Get variable. Maybe we're not building the property table correctly. Let's um, let's see where it's failing first of all. So get calls get own property. Get own property does a shape lookup. If we don't have the value, then we should return. That's silly. Okay. Look at us. Hold on, y is two. That's pretty interesting. So let's make a new object. Or let's see, we should uh, log something. Creating put. So we'll just log something nice here. So we're saying creating new put transition. And here we'll say reusing old put transition. This will just give us a little bit of a quick clue if we're doing the right thing. So var o and var q. Okay, and then we'll do ox is one, o y is one, and we'll try doing the same thing to q. 
no, it's creating new ones. Dang it. Uh, all right, all right. So that didn't work out. Um, so we got to look closer at what the shapes of the new objects are, because presumably we don't share the shape correctly. Um, so when we make a new object, oops, what's this? That's in the object expression. We execute this guy and it allocates a new object. And that's it. So it'll go here and it will get the empty object shape and then set the prototype directly. That's okay. All right, so let's see. Probably we didn't implement forward transition correctly. Probably we're never setting the forward transitions that we do make. Yeah, that seems to be the problem. We never actually cache them. So uh, here we'll say new shape is this, and then we'll cache this forward transition set. Property name is new shape. Return new shape. All right, now it will be cached. So we'll make A and B. Easy names to remember. AX is one, AY is one. So now BX is two, well, let's say one as well. And look at that. It's reusing an old put transition for the new property name X. So um, a and B, they don't have the same shape right now because um, A has transitioned uh, by adding in the Y property. So um, B is halfway to where A is in the transition chain. Now, if we do B, Y is two, even though the numbers are different, as you can see here, it's reusing an existing transition. So now A and B have the exact same shape. So this is exactly where we wanted to get to. And now we're here, so that's great. <sighs> um, so of course this is all very unoptimized and it's very likely that we've broken some things. So this is the part where we will uh, run our test suite and just see if, if it still works. I don't know why we're suddenly building on Linux a little bit. I guess it's a nice change of environment. Uh, tests. And everything fails. Great. Um, hello, does that work? Yeah, it kind of works. Okay, so what happens if we run a very basic math apps test? It just says pass. Oh, because I'm running it with V8.js. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, that was silly. Uh, let's see, meta logon build.js math apps. Oh, it's because of all the output. Um, let's see. So just remove all that debug crap. Resizing storage. Okay, it's more like it. Only one failing test. Get own property names. Okay, all right, so let's see what happens if we only run that one test. Fail, okay, so what does it do? It creates a new array and then tries to get all the own property names. Mm. Well, get own property names. We didn't care at all about arrays, so Let's see, get home property names. We should be getting here though, if object is array. Let's, um, let's try with the REPL. So we'll make something here like this. Get home property names from A. And what is this guy? What are you? <laughs> um, I guess it's the prototype transition. 
So get own property names should only show, should not show the prototype because it's not um, enumerable. So we need to not include prototype transitions when we create the property table. Because we shouldn't have null keys in here in the first place. So it's a good thing we have unit tests. Um, so what did we call that? Uh, ensure property table. So we just have to ignore um, transitions. When we create the property table, we have to ignore transitions that are nameless because they are prototype transitions. So if shape uh, property name is null, then continue. Note uh, this. Let's see. Ignore prototype transitions as they don't affect the key map. Mm. It's a pass. All tests pass. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I think this is probably good enough for today for a first cut. So let's make some commits. Um, let's see what we have. Is any of this doable separately? Not really. Nope, 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 not really, nope. Okay. <clears throat> So libjs add object add object shapes um, start implementing object shapes. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So by the way, I sh I, I guess I, I hope you sort of understand how these work now, and uh, I could talk a bit about kind of uh, things that they enable. So a very interesting thing that they do enable is uh, inline caching. So um, object shapes are sort of the, um, the basic building block for inline caching. And inline caching is where you have some piece of code that runs multiple times. And for instance, something that's in a loop and say that you have something that does a property lookup, right? So for uh, some condition, uh, OF, is uh, x or what do i know or maybe something more logical like do thing o dot f uh, and say that you are iterating over a whole bunch of different o's so o is f i i don't know something like that right and um if you have the o here is a different object on every iteration but it's an exactly the same shape of object then you can optimize this lookup here very, very well um, if you know that they have the same shape because as long as they have the same shape, then the offset um, into the property storage is gonna be identical in each iteration of the loop as long as the shape does not change. So what you can do is you can make a cache where uh, you remember um, which shape you saw here last time and um and in case you see that shape again then you also remember what the lookup resulted in and so you can only do the lookup once and as long as the shape stays the same you have very very fast property access on every iteration of the loop except the first one and that's basically uh, in very simplified terms how that will work and we'll probably implement that in another, in another video but this is the sort of this is an example of the sort of thing you can do with uh, object shapes, which we now have. So, uh, and then there are various other things that you can do as well. But this is this is the um, the most commonly known one, I guess. But we'll get there. Anyway, so uh, this patch adds uh, JS shape, uh, which is a uh, which implements a transition tree for object 
a um, transition tree for our object class. Um, object property keys and attributes are now stored. Property keys, prototypes, and attributes are now stored in uh, a shape, and each object has a shape. Uh, when adding a property to an object, we look for uh, cache. We uh, make a transition from the old shape to a new shape. If we made the same exact transition in the past with another object, we uh, reuse the same transition and the old and, and, and both objects may now share a shape. This is the found. Um, this is the. This will become the foundation of inline caching and other optimizations. And other um, engine optimizations in the future. Yes. Okay. I think that's very nice. So obviously, this is not perfect. I am definitely made mistakes and mess ups and this will require a lot more work, but I'm really happy that we got the, um, sort of this big architectural hurdle um, out of the way. So now shapes are in place and we can continue building on top of them. And I think this is very exciting because this means that we are sort of, at least in, in my view, this is sort of where we start to take things a little seriously and we start to look at um, what are some smart ways to do things, not just naive uh, ways of doing things. So, um, but of course we have a, we have a very long way, uh, long road ahead of us, but it's going to be a fun road. So I guess this will be it for today's video. So um, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out while we do some hardcore architectural work on the JavaScript engine. Um, I hope you saw something interesting here, and I hope I was explaining things well enough. Uh, if you want to know more about shapes and inline caches and things like that, uh, I recall that um, the V8 project, they put out some very nice videos uh, just when Google Chrome was coming out originally. Maybe I can find that actually. The guy who made um, the original V8 guy, Lars Bach, he made um, like an intro video to V8 back in the day. No? You know, I should probably just use Google. <laughs> Lars Bach V8 video. Yeah, this one. This is a short video, um, definitely recommended, and he sort of explains exactly what we were just doing. I remember watching this uh, a long, long time ago and thinking, wow, that's very neat. Um, but I never thought I would sit here and implement it myself. So this is good stuff. And um, this will be very, very interesting to see where we go next with this. And I guess I don't really have much more to say today, so we're just going to run the test suite here inside Serenity just to make sure that we didn't totally ruin everything. But it appears that things still run. Cool. And look at our garbage collector finding all of these dead shapes. That's fine. That's okay. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.